Hello, and welcome to today's TechSoup webinar. Thank you for joining us. My name is Crystal, and I'll be your host. Today's webinar is Making Sense of Financial Literacy, Tech Tools, and Innovative Programs. We have three guests who will share some of what they have done to leverage technology and fun to provide financial literacy information and education to their communities. Uh, before we begin, I have just a few announcements to share. We'll be using the ReadyTalk platform for our meeting today. Uh, please use the chat in the lower left corner to send questions and comments to us and the presenters. We'll be tracking your questions throughout the webinar and we'll answer them at the designated Q&A sections throughout. All of your chat comments will only come to the presenters, but if you have comments or ideas to share, we'll forward them back out to the entire group. You don't need to raise your hand to ask a question. Simply type it into the chat box. Should you get disconnected during the webinar, you can reconnect using the same link in your confirmation email. You should be hearing the conference audio through your computer speakers, but if your audio connection is unclear, you can dial in using the phone number in your confirmation email. If you are having technical issues, please send us a chat message and we will try to assist you. You can also call the ReadyTalk support at the number listed on your screen. This webinar is being recorded and will be archived on the TechSoup website. If you are called away from the webinar or if you have connection issues, you can watch a full recording of this webinar later. You will receive an archive email within 24 hours that will include a link to the recording, the PowerPoint slides, and any additional links or resources shared during the session. If you are tweeting this webinar, please use the hashtag TS4Libs as you see on your screen. We have someone from TechSoup Live tweeting this event, so please join us in the conversation there. TechSoup connects nonprofits, charities, libraries, and foundations with tech products and services, as well as information, so that you can make informed decisions about technology. Over the past 27 years, TechSoup has distributed over 11 million technology donations to over 200,000 nonprofit organizations, libraries, and charities in over 60 countries worldwide. Learn more at TechSoup.org. TechSoup offers programs like QuickBooks and Windows 8 through their product donation program. We also offer 4G mobile broadband devices through Mobile Beacon. For more information about TechSoup products, product donations, or services, please visit us online at TechSoup.org and click on Get Products and Services. You can also subscribe to the TechSoup newsletter to stay up to date on webinars, tech information, and new items available through TechSoup. And TechSoup for Libraries is a project of TechSoup Global created specifically to address the needs, uh, the technology needs of public libraries. TechSoup for Libraries gathers stories from public libraries about how they are utilizing technology and sharing them via webinars, blog posts, and the TechSoup for Libraries monthly newsletter. Find these stories and more at TechSoupForLibraries.org. And with that, we are ready to begin today's webinar, Making Sense of Financial Literacy, Tech Tools, and Innovative Programs. For today's webinar, we are going to focus on some unique ways that libraries like yours can leverage technology to provide financial literacy programs and services without breaking your library's piggy bank. I hope that today's webinar gives you a few ideas that you can apply in your organization. Today we are joined by three guests who will share some of the innovative programs being done in their libraries. Our first two guests join us from South Carolina. Aubrey Carroll is the Information Services Manager at the Florence County Library System and has administered two Smart Investing at Your Library grants. He will tell us some of the very successful programs they have offered to their community, including a financial literacy festival. Heather Pelham is the Public Services Librarian for the Georgetown County Library and is going to share a few video-based projects that have been very successful in engaging their community around financial literacy. Our third guest is Kathleen Kalmus, joining us from the New York Public Library where she is a Financial Resources Specialist in the Science, Industry, and Business Library. She will be, be sharing a set of online training materials for staff, um, on the subject of financial literacy, and these materials are freely available on the New York Public Library website. My name is Crystal Schimpf, and I'll be your host for today's webinar. Assisting us with the chat, we have Becky Wiegand, Manager of the Webinar Program here at TechSoup. We also have Ginny Meese of the TechSoup for Libraries team who will be on Twitter using the at TechSoup for Libs handle. Just a reminder that if you're on Twitter during the webinar, please use the hashtag TS4Libs. 
Now, as you can see, we have a lot to cover today, and as we were just uh, giving you an overview. Um, but we will have qu time for questions and answers throughout the webinar at a few key points. So please send us your questions into the chat as they arise, and we'll address as many as we're able to. If you ask a question and we're not able to answer it during the webinar, we will follow up with you later via email. You can also ask a question on Twitter. Just remember to address it to at TechSoup for Libs and use that Twitter handle as well, TS for Libs. Um, and just as a reminder, if you're just joining us, all of the resources we discussed today will be available in the archive this, of this webinar, which you will receive at the end. Now first, we'd like to learn a little bit about your experiences. Um, so tell us, uh, does your library current, currently offer um, any type of financial literacy programs and services? And even if you're not from a library, if you're joining us from a nonprofit or other type of organization, you feel free to respond to this poll as well. Uh, to respond, you just click the radio button, and then you want to be sure to also click Submit to send that in to us. Um, I also invite you to share into the chat if you have any uh, specific types of programs or services you've done that you would like to share with the rest of the group. We invite you to share that there. And I can see that many of you are getting your responses into us. All right, and I can see that um, you know we're we're at a fairly even split, but that about half of you are have not been currently offering any financial literacy programs or services in your organization, and and um, so I would say for those of you who are fairly new to this, um, I hope that this provides you a nice introduction, um, and for those of you who are um, perhaps. Uh, a little bit more experienced, you may be able to walk away with some new ideas. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now since it seems like most of you have responded so you can see the responses there. And I see that some of you maybe aren't sure if you're in a large organization or if you're not sure what qualifies for financial literacy services or programs. Uh, I think you'll all, uh, regardless of where you're at, walk away with a few ideas today that you'll be able to take back to your organization. So thanks again for joining us. Now right off the bat, I wanted to share a few uh, resources. Uh, many of these we're going to talk about in greater detail throughout the webinar or are going to be mentioned. Um, but these are some uh, uh, you know, uh, great websites that have free information available um, uh, that you can use in financial literacy programs or to, to learn more about financial literacy. Um, one in particular that I will call to your attention now is the Intuit Empowers site, an educational site created by the makers of QuickBooks. Intuit Empowers features a wide range of materials that can be used by individuals or in group programs. And so like I say, I'll be sure to include the link to that as well as the links to all of these resources in your um, uh, archive email that you'll receive within one to two business days. I also wanted to let you all know about an excellent resource from the Reference and User Services Association, which is a division of the American Library Association. Uh, these guidelines for financial literacy uh, education in libraries um, were recently drafted to help all libraries establish quality financial literacy programs without having to become financial advisors, which I know many of us are concerned about for good reason. So this document includes guidelines and recommendations and also some program ideas, and this will be included in the archive as well. So look for that. And so now it's time for me to hand over the virtual mic uh, to Aubrey, who is going to tell us about the smart investing programs that they have done at the Florence County Library System. Aubrey? Thank you, Crystal. And I want to take this opportunity to thank TechSoup for the chance to tell our story today. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a, an exciting story that uh, I hope can be replicated, at least in parts, and, and uh, it's being replicated all over the country, as you will hear from our other speakers today. Uh, I'm, of course, Aubrey Carroll with the Florence County Library System. We are located in the northeast corner of South Carolina. and. Uh, you heard Crystal mention uh, smart investing at your library, and we have received a couple of smart investing grants uh, over the past few years. Uh, some of the grantees have chosen to do very targeted programs toward very specific demographic groups. We saw such a huge need in our community, uh, so many people in need of, of reliable financial information, um, that we decided to take a multi-generational approach and try to reach uh, a lot of the different groups using our library. 
and of course the goal with the Smart Investing at Your Library program, which is a partnership between the American Library Association and the FINRA Investor Education Foundation, is to develop financial literacy in communities um, using libraries and also to uh, impact behavior and actually have people make better decisions uh, and, and, and have a better impact in their lives as a result of getting uh, financial education. A little bit of a project overview. Um, f with the grant funds we received, we expanded our ebook and print collections throughout our uh, six location library system. Uh, we also uh, conducted uh, two Money Madness teen lock ins, which I'll tell you a little bit about uh, in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, one of the major highlights, as Crystal mentioned, was our fall festival. Uh, which is a, fa a family financial literacy event. Uh, we also had a number of uh, money management workshop uh, series, uh, both in our library and in the community. And uh, we also had retirement, or having rather, retirement planning and investing workshops. And we also have a series of uh, programs for children and teens. We call it our Dewey Dollar Smart program. It's named after our library mascot. And we actually have these uh, dollars you can see at the bottom of the slide there uh, that uh, children can get the dollars every time they attend a program or read from uh, one of the smart investing books in our collection. They get a dollar and they can retrieve that, uh, uh, turn that in rather for a chance to win prizes. And that helps create some excitement and fun in our programs. Uh, we have many project partners, and this is a key particularly uh, if you have limited resources. Uh, we, of course, are a smart investing grantee, but there are a lot of resources out there. And one of the resources you can use is to, is to leverage what you have in your library with partners in the community. Uh, and there's a lot you can do just through the partnerships. Um, our partners are, are listed here. We partnered with our South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs, our school district, our adult education center, um, some of the career services groups in our community, our local school of business, AARP. Uh, we also have a group, uh, the Benefit Bank of South Carolina, which helps uh, low-income individuals, uh, help, uh, helps them realize um, state and, and local uh, federal benefits that they may not be aware of. It's actually a nonprofit. Uh, and they have partnered with us. Just an example, some of the project partners you can have. Um, of course, as I mentioned, the highlight of our program was the Fall Festival. Uh, the one we had this past month uh, drew an attendance of 3,700. Um, and that's, that's families uh, with children. Uh, it was a great event. We had uh, a theater group. We had an Emmy Award-nominated puppeteer. We had a children's author who wrote a book about saving money called uh, Start Saving Henry. We had piggy bank crafts, uh, and everything had a money theme. Um, the groups we had perform uh, usually perform uh, to promote reading and literacy uh, in schools and libraries, uh, but we asked them to do something a little different and actually uh, incorporate themes of financial literacy that are age appropriate for children. So they stress things like you know, the value of money, how to save money, the importance of not spending money that you don't have, and that sort of thing. And uh, so we were able to impart an educational uh, message, but actually make it fun. And uh, we also had some of our partners on hand that I mentioned in the previous slide, and they had slide, they had table booths in, the, uh, in our main library, and uh, were able to uh, provide information uh, for some of our adult patrons, our parents. Uh, another fun component of our program is uh, we actually uh, developed a mascot just for the uh, financial literacy programs, and uh, we call him the Money Monster, and he, he's designed to symbolize all the ways that people can waste money. And uh, it, it's basically he, he's designed he can actually eat dollar bills. He's got a, pat, pat, a pouch in his mouth, rather, and we had a naming contest, and a local uh, school student, third grader, actually named him Maximilian. So his full name is Maximilian the Money Monster. And he's, uh, right now you see him in, the, in these slide pictures, uh, pictured with adults. He's popular with the kids, and we wanted to make him fun, not scary. And uh, we had a, a, a costume maker uh, make this for us. But uh, he's just as popular with adults as with children. You can see him here uh, in the uh, right-hand slide. This is one of our career services groups we do out in the community. We do a financial workshop for people uh, getting training for uh, healthcare careers. And uh, it's very popular and helps really kind of drive home the point uh, that financial literacy can be fun. 
Of course, this being TechSoup, we'd be remiss without mentioning some technology components, and that has been a strong part of our program. We have had webinars, not unlike the one you're viewing today, for staff and public. Um, we are a six-library uh, system uh, spread out through the county, so sometimes it's not convenient for some of our branch staff to always come to headquarters or come to one location for training. Um, so we try to bring the training to them uh, through by using webinar technology. And we've also offered this to the public. If we offer a workshop at our main library, for example, uh, we can extend that uh, to the libraries and have done that uh, through webinars. And so we might have you know, 40 or 50 people attending at the main library, but at our other uh, six branch locations, we may have you know, six to 12 people attending there. Uh, and that saves them a drive and, and, and makes it a little more accessible to them and has worked fairly well. Uh, also, our project partners have, have conducted webinars. We have for example, the South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs has done training for our staff on some of the services and resources they have available, and they've done that training from our state capital in Columbia, which is two hours away from our library. So technology has played an important part. Of course, social media is always useful in promoting these events. And another service we have is that we have uh, consumer scam alerts via email uh, with the South Carolina Department of Consumer Affairs. Uh, we we uh, our people can sign up for this service for us, and we push these out on a monthly basis. Uh, we have also had a retirement planning workshop. The first one we had was uh, a couple of years ago was, was a very traditional one, and we've developed it over time. Uh, the last one we had, we, we did it in our computer lab, and we made it much more hands-on. One of the things we did was add a, a a retirement calculator uh, component. Actually, we added a lot of calculators. One of the things that really sort of drives home the point of how to plan for your retirement is to have people plug numbers into good, reliable calculators. Uh, an example of one is, is one that is put out by our sponsor, the FINRA uh, Investor Education Foundation. And this is a, a pretty straightforward retirement calculator. You put in um, basically your rate of savings, how much savings you have right now, when you plan to, return, uh, plan to retire, how much income you're going to need um, to live uh, at a comfortable level and comparable to what you uh, are experiencing now. And then you plug these numbers in, and you can see over time on the right-hand side, there's a table that develops um, that uh, tells you year by year um, what your deposit is and your balance and how long it will take for your money to, to run out. It literally runs on assumptions like, uh, you know, if you're going to live to 85, then you put that in, and, and of course, the summary table is to the left. So uh, that's a way for people to see. And that, that was a really successful component for us in the retirement workshop. People really, I think, got a lot more involved when they could, when they could do these hands-on exercises um, and really see how these financial decisions can impact their lives. Uh, another highlight uh, we had, uh, I mentioned before, the teen lock-in. A lock-in, for those who are not familiar, is basically an after-hours program at the library. And we set a state record uh, by having 189 teens attend and it, and uh, in uh, our 2012 lock-in. And the way we did is we uh, sent flyers to all the schools, uh, and uh, we emphasized the fun aspects. You can see the, the flyer at the top there. We had prizes uh, donated and uh, it was a, a great event, and we had a lot of games. We had game show type activities, a lot of sort of money games, made it very fun, a scavenger hunt. And uh, we actually got a, a, got a lot, a lot of points uh, across to the kids about uh, the dangers of credit cards and how interest payments add up and so forth. And it's really important to reach that age group uh, because they're going to be inundated with credit card offers. We've also had senior lunch and learn programs for seniors where we uh, prevented, uh, presented information on scams and uh, things that, that are uh, unscrupulous uh, operators that are uh, um, targeting them, and that was a very successful program. And it looks like uh, my time is just about up here, so at this point I'm going to turn it back to our moderator, and uh, we will open it up for questions, and I thank you for your time. Great. Uh, thank you, Aubrey. I mean, you have so many great programs happening and some really interesting ways to take traditional library programs we might think of and expand them into the area of financial literacy, having a festival, having uh, the teen lock-ins, having workshops and that sort of thing. Um, now, one uh, question that we did have is uh, come from the audience is, with the fall festival in particular, was that a one-day event or did it, was it spread across multiple days? 
that was a one-day event. Uh, originally, when we tried having it uh, in a different form a few years earlier, we had tried in the morning at 10 a.m., and we found that most people don't get up that early on a Saturday, and we, so we started it at noon and held it f- until 4 p.m., and we rotated the acts. Of course, we had the, uh, the theater group and the, um, the puppeteer and the children's author, and we would stagger those so people could get around to see all of those. And we had also all, all sorts of craft activities going on at the front of the library, face painting and balloon sculpting, and we had money-oriented crafts and so forth. So it was really a whole festival event. And so by spreading it over four hours, people could attend. They could have lunch while they were here. They could see all of the things that were going on. And, and we found that that was, that was about the right time for us. Great, great, and such an impressive number of participants, you know, especially that you know, 3,700 people is, is really quite a, a large number. Um, now, we're yes. also getting some questions in about the um, where you access the materials. Um, uh, Arlene is asking about the source that you used for the games, and I'm guessing that's the games you used in the teen lock-in, but also yes. if there are any sources you used for the curriculum in your workshop. So I know I'm throwing two questions mm-hmm. right at okay. you at the same time, but if you can address <laughs> that, would be great. <laughs> sure. Um, the games, uh, a lot of resources you can find on the FINRA Investor Education Education, uh, website and the Smart Investing at Your Library websites. Uh, a number of libraries have have done programs, uh, and they share those uh, on uh, on that website and on those websites. So a lot of the ideas we sort of borrowed. Some of them we you know we may have taken directly. Others we 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 may have been inspired by and then sort of modified them ourselves. But it's it's a great. A resource for free information. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, so many great things have been done out there by uh, libraries already, particularly those who are smart investing at your library grantees. So I would urge people to check out the um, smart investing at your library uh, uh, website uh, and also the educational resources at the FINRA Investor Education Foundation website. Uh, for the great. other question, the uh, curriculum uh, for the, uh, I believe it was the retirement planning workshops, uh, that was uh, developed in, in conjunction with the professors that we use. We had instructors from our local university school of business, and I had mentioned them as a as a partner earlier. Um, so we actually uh, developed the program uh, with them, and they were very experienced in, in that area in, in financial education and investment and money management. And uh, we, uh, we also used the educational modules uh, from uh, the FINRA Investor Education Foundation, um, and those basically have a, a curriculum outline. So I think you may be able to Google that, or we may be able to provide that as a, as a link at a later point. But it's uh, the investor education modules uh, that are part of the uh, Smart Investing Program, and I believe they're available through the FINRA, FINRA Investor Education website. Yes, and we will be sure to include those links. And I think that the great message here is that you can provide some really quality programs without having to spend any money um, if you have both access to these free resources and also perhaps with some community partners who have a lot of experience can help you create something even beyond what's available for free online. So we will include those resources um, in, in the archive of this webinar. And I, you know, we have had a lot of other questions uh, come in, but at this point we are going to move on um, and, and hear the next part of our presentation. So for those of you who have asked questions, we will try to get to them at the end um, either or, or or in the chat as we go along. So thanks for sending in your questions. Uh, but for now, I want to uh, hear from Heather who is going to tell us about how they have integrated video productions into their financial literacy programming. Heather? Thank you, and hello to everyone uh, on the webinar. Uh, much like Florence County Library System, we are on our second Smart Investing at Your Library grant, and it has really helped us put a focus and emphasis on financial programming. We were a little nervous at first about taking on the challenge because we're like every other small library trying to do 8 million things with 59 cents and a handful of full-time staff. Uh, but the FINRA grant has been really helpful with not only funding, but materials, networking, and guidance. Uh, we've also found some great materials and ideas from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and that's your Ask CFPB uh, website. You can go on there and find all sorts of good stuff. And later in the talk, I'm going to talk about how we've incorporated video into our programming. And we paid for most of those supplies with a one-year uh, Best Buy Teen Technology Grant. So here's what we've been doing. Uh, we offer one-hour workshops on everything from how credit works to investing basics. And we run the workshops at our four library branches 
but we also partner with local nonprofits and run the workshops at their locations. We've also tried to be really flexible. Um, for example, in the summer, many of our lower income residents get seasonal hotel work in Myrtle Beach, and they aren't available to take classes. So we went out to the summer programs where their kids were and taught financial classes for kids. And we have a wonderful roster of instructors from groups like the Small Business Development Center, Cooperative Extension, SCORE, SC Legal Services. And once you get the ball rolling, it gets pretty easy. We've done 74 workshops uh, just in the past 18 months. Uh, four times a year, we hold a Train the Trainer workshop for librarians and also for the staff of local nonprofits. And we give attendees an in-depth look at financial topics plus lots of handouts they can share with their clients. And we also let them know about reputable online information sources. And much like Florence, we found that having a Fall Festival of Financial Fitness is a great thing to do. Uh, so once a year, we hold the Fall Festival, and it draws a huge crowd for our small community. And we have booths manned by financial experts who offer unbiased information about saving and investing. And we also have a piggy bank art contest and paintable piggy banks and a live band and a jumpy castle and fire truck rides, pizza, popcorn, soda, face painting, and all that good stuff that gets folks to come to a festival. Uh, librarians and local service groups run everything for us, um, so it, it tends to be relatively cost effective. And our next festival is this Saturday, so wish us luck. Now, getting into the whole video production and financial fitness. Um, here in Georgetown County, we are huge on history. Many of the homes in our historic district date back to the 1700s, and every single surviving plantation claims that George Washington slept there. Huge swaths of property here were snapped up in the 1920s by the Vanderbilts, Baruchs, and Huntingtons, and they hosted presidents and movie stars, and Tom Yawkey even uh, bought one of our islands and brought the Ross Boston Red Sox players here to chill out in the off season. So we are super interested in local history. So as part of our financial efforts, uh, we started interviewing residents about their experiences during the Great Depression. And we would travel to the homes of the people we were interviewing if they seemed to be more at ease uh, when they were there. Um, this also encouraged them to dig up any photos and artifacts they might have. And uh, the camera and microphones and lights tended to be a little daunting at the start of an interview. But we'd keep the interviews informal and conversational, and they'd pretty soon they'd forget about the equipment. Uh, we edit using Adobe Premiere, and thanks to the Best Buy grant I mentioned earlier, um, I even have this cute little editing suite that we carved out of a closet. We recently started a new series of interviews with folks who faced financial hardships other than the Great Depression, and that series is called Up by Their Bootstraps. We burn all our interviews to DVD and have them available for checkout at our library branches. And I know that's a little old school now, but we do have a group of patrons who love coming and checking out the DVDs like they're getting a movie. And we also upload the documentaries to the Georgetown County Library's uh, channel on YouTube, and then we link them back to our website and Facebook. And if you want to watch just one of these interviews, I would check out the Great Depression Women of Georgetown video. It's got quotes from 15 women in just 11 minutes. And if you want to check out a bunch of the interviews, they're all on the Georgetown Memories playlist on our channel on YouTube. I saved my favorite financial video adventure for last. Uh, we've shot 14 financial fitness commercials with local kids from all over the county. These play on our local cable channels, and they promote the library as the go-to place for financial information. Um, and we've shot these commercials at schools, at the library, at summer and after school programs, and we even had a casting call in the newspaper. And boy, did we get a lot of kids to that. <laughs> the videos are posted on YouTube, and they're featured on our website. Um, they're just 30 seconds long, so I thought it might be fun if we watched one we did at a local middle school. We all have dreams about having plenty of money and being able to buy what we want. The first step is to know how to save and make your money work for you. Georgetown County Library has classes you can teach right at your school. Learn how to earn, save, and invest from people you can trust. The commercials are a great way to sneak some financial education for kids into the mix. We teach two classes before the kids get to their uh, starring role. Here's how it works. On day one, the kids have a financial fitness class, and we do lots of hands-on activities and role-playing in those to keep things fun. 
and I cover basic concepts like types of bank accounts and how to save, how a credit card works, and what debt is. And it gets kids comfortable talking about financial concepts. And I love teaching classes to kids. They don't have a lot of really difficult questions like what type of annuity they should buy. Then on day two, we come back and do a basic tutorial in video production. This has never been a problem. The kids love hands-on time with cameras and microphones and lighting. And we even have this cute little portable um, green screen. I'm continually amazed at how comfortable kids are with video technology from the minute they pick it up. As part of the class, the kids even practice interviewing each other, and they write their own script for the commercials. And then I get to edit it a little bit. <laughs> And then for a third session, the kids actually get to shoot and star in their own commercial. Uh, due to time constraints, I do the editing at the library. And I should stress, it's not that the kids can't edit the commercials. Uh, we just don't have enough time to teach that many classes. But once you've got editing basic, it only takes a couple hours to put the spots together. Then when I finish the commercials, we have a big red carpet premiere. And I give all the kids uh, the YouTube link for their spot so they can show it to their parents. And then for months afterwards, we see parents sharing the links on Facebook, so it's yet another great way to uh, advertise. One of my favorite parts of the process is seeing which, kids, uh, which way the kids want to go with the commercials. So let's watch one more commercial. Um, this one was done by some teens in a rural part of Georgetown County called Carver's Bay. I want to go to college, to earn a college degree, to be a math teacher, to be a nurse, to be a veterinarian. To be a psychologist. To be a superstar! To be number one. But my dreams cost money. Georgetown County Library has the books, videos, workshops, computer programs, and personal help. To get me on the right path. I want to do it right. So to sum it up, our library's financial fitness program has plenty of moving parts. Um, adding a video component took things in a whole new direction for us. We preserved some history, we bolstered our publicity el our efforts, and we even stayed relevant with the next generation. So what more could we ask for? And I'll send it back to you for questions. Great. Uh, thanks for sharing those. And I know, um, you know those are just a couple of the videos, but I particularly love the, the difference in the energy between the middle schoolers and the, the older uh, high school age kids um, and the, the different uh, message that they brought with it. So I love that variety. And I would encourage um, all of you listening to this webinar, watching this webinar, uh, to check out their YouTube channel. We'll include the link in the archive. So um, be sure to check that out and see some of the other ideas um, that, that were uh, portrayed in these video uh, PSA commercials. Um, now Heather, I just wanted to, uh, to ask you, I, I see some questions are coming in right now, but right off the bat, do you have any ideas for other types of media content that you might do in the future around financial literacy? What type of projects might be coming for you in the future? Well, we are, we are right in the middle of our Up By Their Bootstraps interviews. Um, so at the moment, <laughs> it's keeping me super busy. But uh, we also have uh, some Dollar Baby commercials coming up. We, uh, the kids wanted to do some things where there's a, basically a baby who looks like a big bag of money. <laughs> it's a long story, but um, the baby's going to give everybody advice or kids advice on uh, how to save, how to start um, thinking about the future and being smart with your money. So. We're sticking with video for now because we really are having fun with it, and it gets the kids really fired up about um, learning a little more about financial fitness. That's great. That's great. And it sounds like you've been really able to capitalize on the technology that you have available and some of the like the Best Buy grants. Um, we actually we have another question uh, as far as um, where. Uh, let me just restart. Uh, Claudia asks, "Where did the where did the commercials run? Um, you know, they're about thirty seconds long. Did they run on the local TV station or just on the library website?" Well, we were extremely fortunate in that we were able to use part of our FINRA grant to uh, pay for some airtime on Time Warner Cable and in our area, Southern Coastal Cable channels, which basically control everyone's uh, cable. So they are running on you know Nickelodeon, TNT, ESPN, CNN, the Weather Channel. And the great thing about these is because they're, you know, a, a good message in a nonprofit organization, they give us a BOGO deal. You buy an ad, you get one free. And we found that um, when we run out of our contract time, they keep running them anyways. So we love that. And, and we do also run them on our website. And uh, um, just now and then we'll post something on Facebook when it's new too. So 
Great, great. And I think you mentioned earlier that one of the the best sources of views on on the YouTube channel was at the parents, right? So yeah, you know, as parents proud. are so <laughs> proud to share. <laughs> so, um, but that's great to hear that you're also using the local media and um, and kind of the lesson there being if you spend a little bit, you actually get quite a bit um, uh, in return because they might be willing to run the ads longer. So a great tip there. Um, well, uh, Heather, thank you so much for sharing this, and we uh, will get to some more questions at the end. We'll have one more uh, kind of longer question and answer period at the end. Uh, but for now, I'd like to move on and have Kathleen, who is our final speaker, uh, share some of the fantastic training resources that they have available uh, through the New York Public Library to help you and your staff feel confident with the subject of financial literacy. Kathleen? Thank you, Crystal, and thank you, TechSoup. And thank you also, Heather and Aubrey. I've learned so many wonderful things from you, but I have some ideas for you as well. Um, first, I want to tell you I'm Kathleen Kalmus. I am not a librarian. <coughs> Excuse me. I've had three careers so far, an investment professional, a mom, and working with the NYPL, New York Public Library, to bring financial information to the world. Well, maybe I set my sights a little bit high. But the New York Public Library seemed an excellent place to start this mission, and I must say, after 10 years, I think we've made some progress. Um, when we started, we identified two primary areas of difficulty. Library patrons, at least in the New York metropolitan area, and I suspect that's true in South Carolina as well, did not expect to find financial information at the library. It's a mindset. And a survey of our librarians confirmed that 88% of the librarians did not believe their patrons ever asked financial questions. Also, the second part of the problem was that library personnel actively discouraged the notion that such questions could be answered. They were not qualified to give medical, financial, or legal advice. Wait a minute. Who said anything about advice? Librarians should not be giving financial advice, but financial information is now readily available to librarians through the Internet, and they can share that information with the public. So with the mantra, information, not advice, we began six or seven years ago to break down those two walls of public mindset and librarian reluctance. The going was slow here at NYPL with 89 branches across three boroughs and as uh, Heather said, 59 cents. Uh, not a lot of spare resources. And then came along <coughs> excuse me, the Institute of Museums and Library Services with the offer of a grant to help jumpstart a financial education program for librarians, not just at the New York Public Library, but indeed the world. Perfect. We jumped at the chance and we brought in two professional educators from Rutgers University to help us develop a complete curriculum for librarians to help them share financial information with their patrons. The result is what you see before you, a website called Money Matters Pro. So what exactly is Money Matters Pro? Well, it's an entire curriculum focusing on 11 critical financial elements to help librarians anywhere learn more about financial matters and to make them more comfortable giving the public information, not advice. So what are the 11 program areas? Well, Heather and um, Aubrey both mentioned some of them. Banking, so critical to us all. Do we really understand everything those bankers say when we walk into the, into the shop there? Credit and debit. A lot of us have difficulty with our de credit cards and with our mortgages and things of that nature. Retirement planning, so critical to your future. Investing one and two. You've mentioned FINRA, a wonderful, wonderful place to learn about investing, but we'll help you with that too. Identity theft, who's feeling safe these days? I think it was Staples that was hacked today, or yesterday rather. Insurance. Always a good question, a lot of different areas, health insurance, life insurance, all different things. 
Unfortunately, some of us are living on the financial edge. We can give you some education there as well. Paying for college. There's a lot of people out there. I believe President Obama has complained about his having to pay for college right up to he got into office. Um, income taxes. Taxes, taxes, taxes. There's more that we can all learn about these topics. And while these programs were designed to help librarians help their patrons, we quickly understood that they helped our library staff as well. So let's take a look inside. Okay, we recommended from the start that our frontline staff take a minimum of the three core classes, banking, credit, and retirement. Okay, and we encourage that they take a few electives as well. Over two years, the Rutgers personnel offered each of these three-hour programs several times at various New York Public Library locations, and we continue to offer the programs to our staff on an ongoing basis. So what will you find on this portal? Let's focus for a moment on the retirement program. Okay, on this next page you see a whole bunch of things, um, and it looks confusing, but really you can download each one, one at a time, and you can start with the Leader's Guide, which is a step-by-step -step guide to reproduce the entire three-hour training session. Now I can understand that the thought of a three-hour tra training session might be a little bit daunting. So you can take it in parts, and let's look at the parts. We have a PowerPoint presentation. We have small group uh, discussions. There's a Jeopardy game. Everybody loves Jeopardy. A comprehensive list of resources. Now, Crystal mentioned that she's going to share some resources at the end of this show, and they're going to be great ones. But let me tell you, we have every good resource known to man someplace in this, on this site. You'll also find for each program a, a, a couple of very useful PDF handouts. And in some cases, sometimes we have a short, entertaining clip as well. So let's look at the individual pieces. Okay, here we have, oh, and I do suspect by this time some of my colleagues from some smaller library systems are thinking, but who's going to do the teaching? Well, the Leader's Guide will help you through that. And I think you can also work with the material um, on your own or to learn as a group. And I also, I think Heather mentioned you have some specialists come in to do workshops for your library staff once or twice. This is a perfect curriculum for them to start with. The PowerPoint, well, okay, yes. Of any PowerPoint, there's going to be a certain amount of slides with just words. But there are many slides that allow you to look at an interactive game, in this case the longevity game, I, I always like to tell people that when they start planning their retirement, they first have to decide how long they're going to live, and this game will let you do that. Um, and it's embedded into the PowerPoint slides, so you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to go off to some other resource to find it. It's right there in the slides. And there are also in these PowerPoints a lot of charts and other visuals to help you learn. Um, the small group discussions, well, here's an example where we have an example with a library patron trying to decide whether they should take Social Security at age 62 or wait to their full retirement age, what is their full retirement age, and lots of other questions. Well, you as a librarian have never met this person before, and so clearly you cannot answer the question. But you can say that, yes, you don't know them well enough to quite answer their question, but you know where the Social Security website is, and you know on that website there are different pages that will help them estimate how much money they will receive at 62, how much money they'll receive if they wait till 66. What, will they lose some money if they work and accept retirement benefits? All of that can be found, and a librarian who knows how to look at that website can help a person find their way through. Um, beyond the small group discussions, there are, oh, I need to say that with the small group discussions, there are questions, and then we do provide the answers as well, just in case you were unsure. Um, the next part I wanted to look at is our Money Matters Jeopardy game. 
each one of these classes has a game attached. I, I believe there's 20 questions, but there may be some more. Um, and, and the answers, the answer key is also there. Um, and they question you on what you just learned. Okay, take a look at it. I hope you all got the right answer on this one. It's A, in case you weren't sure. And then we do have these small video clips. Uh, again, it's a simple example uh, of a patron coming into a librarian and asking a question. And in the clip, the librarian answers, not with the final answer, but with how the patron, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> but how the patron can, I do have a glass of water. How the patron can find the answer. Each of these clips also ends with an open-ended question, which leaves more room for discussion between in any group that's trying to learn how to do these things. <coughs> Sorry. The next page. <coughs> Sorry about that. I don't usually break out coughing. But the next page. Um, shows the resources. And we've added to the top of this list the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, um, which has recently begun to work with the ILMS uh, to produce information for, especially for libraries. They have a terrific list of resources. Um, and the link here will help you to order brochures for things like My New Money Goal, How to Find the Best Credit Card, Know Your Financial Advisor, and many others. All of these you can put out at whatever desk is available to you. And we find we carry them all and many more brochures from both FINRA and from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. We find these fly out of our library. Once people see them there, they'll collect five or six brochures that are important to them. And beyond that first listing of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, we have um, just, you can only see an example of this on the website, but these are the retirement planning online resources. Again, we have a life expectancy calculator. Uh, but there is also, if you go there, there's this choose to save.org, which allows you to estimate how much money you need for your retirement or how much money you're going to need to pay a, a credit card bill or what kind of loan you can afford to buy an auto or several other things. And also, the compound interest calculator, which as a, as a real tool for financial literacy or a beginning tool for financial literacy, understanding how compound interest works for you with your savings and against you when you're in debt is a real key to the better managing your money. Uh, so throughout these resources, you'll find many links to calculators or things like that, but you'll also find resources. You would also find FINRA listed, of course, and many, many, many other uh, financial links that will bring you to the answers to specific questions. Uh, now, we also did understand that in many libraries, in many branch libraries here, and also in many smaller libraries throughout the United States, that Money Matters Pro was, okay, let me start that again. We understood that when Money Matters Pro was under development, that not all personnel would have the time or the opportunity to work through all 11 three-hour programs. That's like getting your master's degree. So with even a smaller library system, we developed these small um, e-learning e sessions each one of these sessions is only a half an hour. You can go to it any time, um, and it gives you the basics that you would have gotten in the three-hour program. Okay, you don't know quite as much, um, but they, along with the resources pages, will give your staff the leg up they need to share worthwhile financial information with your patrons. So there you have it. That's Money Matters Pro, brought to you by the New York Public Library and the Museum the Institute for Museum and Library Services. Um, and Crystal, I guess you can take it back for any questions. 
Yes, and thank you, Kathleen, for sharing these really valuable training resources. And and you're absolutely right. You said you know that you've got probably every resource out there that could exist, and that's why I'm so glad I don't have to send a link to a hundred websites. I'm going to send the link to yours and a few of the key other ones that we mentioned, and then I'm going to let all of you go and visit um, the Money Matters Pro website and uh, have some time to really see what's available there. I mean, between those face-to-face -face training training materials, and also the um, e-learning modules that you have. I think there's just a tremendous amount there that will hopefully help all of your library staff and, and maybe even yourself come up, up, up to speed a little bit. And I have to confess that for some of this, I'm just looking forward to reviewing it myself because I think there's just a, a wealth of great information there. Um, now, Kathleen, I do have just uh, one, one question for you. Um, and I'd like to, to know what has the response been from the staff at New York Public Library with regards to this training? How has it been received? I think it's been quite well received. Um, people continue to come to the training. We continue to offer the classes, um, and they continue to come to it. There is always still some resistance. Um, and there is also, of course, a lack of resources, so people are often trying to find the time. We often hear that they'd love to come to this class, but they have to be on a desk. I understand that that's a problem, and that's why we do have those half an hour online resources. But it, you know, Great. we do have a good response to it, and we've had a lot of people. I, don't, I, I unfortunately do not know how many, li how many of our library personnel. I think I'm getting, oh, I guess 243 people went through the training, at least the three core classes. So that's pretty good. Great. Yeah, it sounds like a good response so far. And of course now maybe many more people will be taking part in it outside of your library walls. So um, uh, that's great to hear. Um, so now um, I actually you know, have a question to open up to all of you, but before I do I just want to invite uh, those of you who are uh, listening in to do uh, put any questions that you have in, in the chat. We'll get to as many as we can today. Um, oops. Let's just go back there. So we still have one more one more question for all of you um, here on the call as presenters, and and this uh, came in earlier. Um, wondering if uh, any libraries are doing one on one or book a librarian type services related to financial literacy uh, as opposed to the larger group type events. Um, and Kathleen, I might send this to you first. Is there anything that New York Public Library is doing uh, on, in terms of a one-on-one -on -one appointment for uh, library users? Yes, definitely. Um, we do it, but we don't have librarians do it. We have a partnership with the Financial Planning Association of New York, and we have one-on-one -on -one sessions with the FPA personnel. So they are real financial advisors. Um, the FPA does it free, free absolutely free. We offer people half an hour sessions. Um, we also have free counseling sessions, which we call credit crisis counselors. Again, that is not through, that's not librarians. That is professionals who have been trained through uh, the Financial Coaching Corps um, who come to the library and will offer people free half an hour sessions. They'll get their credit reports for them. We also now have just started to have a Medicare counselor offered by HICAP. Um, and I'm sorry, I can't think of what those initials stand for right now. But it's another organization. Again, when it comes to advice, we don't think librarians should give the advice. We have to wait. We have to bring in other professionals for that. Okay? Great, and that sounds like a wonderful use of uh, some community partnerships. So, um, so now, uh, Heather, I'll hand this question to you. Is there anything you've been doing in, at the Georgetown County Library with one-on-one uh, -on -one services? I would say what we have at this moment is a little more of a, a situational thing. If someone comes in and has financial questions, our librarians are just much more prepared to show them where the right books are, which books have been you know, vetted by librarians and also by patrons and been found to be beneficial. And also, they're much more comfortable talking about online resources um, and the, which ones are reputable. So that's our big thing right now. Great. And Aubrey, what about you in Florence County? Well, uh, pr pretty much along the lines of uh, what, what Heather just mentioned. And uh, I like to also go back to Kathleen's point is is that as librarians, you know, we're we're not necessarily going to be giving people financial 
advice, nor should we, uh, any more than we would give legal or medical advice. But as librarians, what we have to offer is the ability to point people and direct them um, to the correct resources, to listen to what their needs are and uh, get them in contact. And, and that might be you know, print resources, it might be online resources, or in the case of, of what Kathleen mentioned, it may be uh, connecting them to a qualified uh, financial counselor um, who, who is trustworthy and, and vetted. And so we are also uh, working with our partners. Uh, we are, have, uh, are, have a partnership with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, um, as, our, as our fellow libraries do uh, at Georgetown. Um, and, uh, as part of that, uh, they do have uh, financial counseling days. You can work um, with uh, financial counselor organizations uh, to bring people to your community to offer one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. Um, so it's a, it's a great program. Um, and so that's, that's the sort of way that we provide those services. Great, wonderful. Well, well, good advice across the board uh, for librarians and library staff, uh, and also I'm sure for many of the nonprofits out there who might be on this call today. And, and so thanks for sharing your perspective on that question and also on everything else um, that we've addressed so far in this webinar. Unfortunately, we are out of time to answer the questions, but for those of you who have still been sending questions in, um, we will uh, get back to you via email uh, within the next week or so. So thank you for sending those questions, and sorry we didn't get to them right now. Um, but before we get off, I, uh, off of the webinar, I'd want to ask you to reflect on what we've just talked about and think, you know, are there any key ideas or tools that you've learned about? Uh, what's going to be most helpful for you, and what will you do next? Um, just I invite you to make a brief note on a Post-it or a piece of scrap paper nearby so you'll remember it when you have time to come back to this subject or maybe when you get that archive email. Um, I do hope you've learned a few new things and that you'll share this with others. Uh, somebody did ask, are, we, uh, are you allowed to share this link to this webinar? And in fact, you can. So please share this uh, information out to others um, and, and then they'll be able to access the archive as well. It, it it's actually uh, would be best if you forward the archive email to them, then they might be able to access that as well. Um, so please do share this out with others in your library or your organization. Uh, we're just about to end the webinar, uh, but I want to ask you to stay on the line until the very end. You'll receive a brief survey where you can tell us about your experience. And again, that e email with the archive materials will be in your inbox within one to two uh, business days. Uh, we also have some other great webinars coming up in the next month. Uh, this Friday we have a webinar on QuickBooks, and next week uh, we'll be having one on crowdfunding for nonprofits. Um, now in November we'll have our next library-specific webinar on tech tools for early literacy. To register for any of these webinars, you can visit TechSoup.org and browse to the upcoming webinars area of the page. We want to be sure to thank ReadyTalk for being our sponsor today. And remember that if you host webinars or online meetings at your organization, ReadyTalk is a tool that can help, and you can get more information about this product donation program on the TechSoup website. Thank you all for joining us today. We hope that you'll share your stories with us, and thanks to our guest speakers for sharing their expertise and to those who assisted in the chat and on Twitter. Uh, again, please stay on the line and take a brief survey about your experience. Uh, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.